Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of this morning's gospel. Our gospel today can be found on page 784 in your pew Bible, Matthew chapter 3, beginning with verse 13. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented, and when Jesus had been baptized, just as he had come from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Do we have any children that would like to come forward for a kid's message this morning? Okay. Okay. Well, grace and peace to you from God our Creator and from Jesus, God's beloved Son. Every so often here at Trinity, we have name tag Sunday. Often this takes place on a Sunday when we are welcoming new members. It's a means of providing a welcoming space for these new members to begin learning who people are, the names of people who are sitting next to them. And it is also a nice opportunity for current members as well. Because how many times have you forgotten the name of the person who sits in the same pew as you, but since you have already met them a dozen times, are embarrassed to ask their name again? When Paul and I hosted a picnic for our families the night before we got married, we had name tags so that everyone could fill out who they are and how they're connected to the family. It was fun to see that some were far more creative than simply saying, Randy, uncle of the bride. One actually touted that they were my favorite uncle, and I I didn't know that, so that was helpful to find out. One added that I was a former roommate and partner in crime. And then there was the honest daughter of a college friend of mine that simply wrote, I'm just here for the cake. (laughs) Name tags can be helpful little tools. Beyond the actual names that we can write, I'm struck by how many ways we can describe who we are. For example... I'm not just Amanda, I'm a daughter, I'm a wife, a friend, a colleague, a teammate, a pastor. And the list could go on and on, taking up more and more of that precious writing space on the name tag. Well, how about you? What all could you write on the name tag? Now, chances are it depends on the situation and the circumstances and how you want those who read it to perceive you. I wonder what Jesus would write if he was filling out a name tag. Would he simply put Jesus? Would he put J.C., Christ, Emmanuel, Messiah, King, Good Shepherd, Prince of Peace? The list could certainly go on and on. For Jesus. But our gospel story today from Matthew might help to give us a clue. Today we heard the story of Jesus' first public appearance. This is his coming of age moment, if you will, as he emerges on the edges of the Jordan River to be baptized by his cousin John. Yet it is a rather peculiar story. Jesus enters the sea not as a valiant king or leader but instead comes in the most humble way possible. Jesus comes alongside sinners, coming to repent and to receive cleansing waters 
from the river. Our Gospel writer Matthew, always very intentional with his writing. And while in the case of the birth narrative, Matthew wanted to be clear that this child was born not some ordinary baby born out of wedlock to a teenage mother, but a child conceived by the Holy Spirit. One that God had planned for in a unique and miraculous way. Well, similarly, in the telling of Jesus' baptism, Matthew takes time to include a conversation between John and Jesus that answers the inevitable question that people would have, if Jesus is without sin, why did he need to be baptized? And the answer fits neatly into Matthew's ongoing perspective that Jesus Christ was the fulfillment of what had been promised. In his gospel, Jesus' baptism is a reflection of that as a part of a fulfilling of a plan that had been set in motion a long time ago. And his approach to the moment is pivotal, and it illustrated the kind of leader, the kind of Messiah that Christ will be, one who truly walks alongside the people and is a servant to all. Such humility echoes prophets like Isaiah and also foreshadows the events that are to come for Jesus. But back to the riverside where we discover more about who exactly Jesus is. After he convinces John to actually baptize him, the heavens break open. The Spirit of God descends like a dove in what I imagine to be a Hollywood-inspired cinematic glory And the voice of God speaks to all who have gathered. And this is another unique feature of Matthew's telling. Because in Luke and Mark, this voice is heard only by Jesus. But in Matthew, it is a public proclamation, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. And there you have it. Another thing to add to Jesus' name tag. In this proclamation, God claims and affirms Jesus' identity and commissions him to carry out God's purpose on earth. And it is from this story, along with the Great Commission at the end of Matthew's Gospel, that we draw our understanding of the sacrament of baptism. Along with communion, we identify it as something Christ participated in and instructed us to do the same. And the concluding words from our passage today celebrate God's claiming of Christ as God's beloved Son. And here is the connection to our own baptism. It is in the same way in baptism we affirm God's love for us. And we proclaim to the one who's baptized, whether it is a sweet and squirmy infant a tenacious and talented teen, or a weathered and wise adult. We claim to the one being baptized that they belong to God. And baptism gives us a new name tag to bear, child of God. In our own baptism, God opens up the heavens, descends from on high, and comes to meet us where we are and exactly as we are. And even more than this, speaks directly to each of us and says, You are my beloved. I am well pleased with you. Each of us so longs to hear words of acceptance and identity, of blessing and commitment, and this is precisely the gift of baptism. And in the true nature of a gift, there are no strings attached. We do not have to do anything to receive God's promises. Indeed, the beauty of infant baptism is that you can't do anything, not even make a decision for Jesus, let alone commit your life. Rather, we are passive recipients of God's blessing and favor. We are called God's beloved children, not because of something we do, but because of God, of who God is. A loving parent who wants nothing more than to see us flourish. And the identity of being God's beloved child precisely 
because it is established by God means that it cannot be taken away for us, from us, or for that matter, lost by us. So as we begin a new year together, I encourage you to hold in your mind that baptism is a sacrament that reminds us that we are claimed as Christ's own forever. Now this is a claim that has actually happened well before the water hits our head. It is a promise as old as God, but in baptism, we write it on a name tag for the world to see. Child of God. And this identity as God's beloved children is the root of our identity as Christians, that we belong to God. This is true from the very beginning, and it is not something that we have earned because we are particularly cute or talented, because to be honest, we are not as cute and talented as we sometimes think we are. It is because God created us to be in relationship, going so far as to send Jesus to make sure that we know just how much God loves us. And in order to live into this promise, in order to be faithful disciples, we have to allow this name, this label, this claiming to be the one that transcends all of the others. Because above all else, we have to remember that we are children of God. So friends, as we move forward into a difficult world, we also have to realize that this is going to be quickly tested because we juggle many different names and roles. Some of them fit in well with the idea of being a child of God and others not so much. And sometimes instead of letting God proclaim who we are, beloved, we allow the world around us to define us. Writer Patricia Callahan says, As we grow, we sometimes forget the heavenly voice, and we begin to listen to other voices that confuse us. Perhaps we hear voices when we are children through report cards that tell us that we are not smart enough. As teenagers, we hear voices through the cruelty of other teens who tell us that we are not cool enough. As adults, we hear voices that tell us we are not successful enough or that we do not have enough money. Somehow, as God's voice gets drowned out, we listen to these other voices and we are tempted to forget who we are. We are tempted to forget that God and a community of God's people have claimed us as beloved children of God. Beloved children of God, this is God's promise and God's proclamation. Through Christ, through Christ, we belong to God. It is a promise sealed in the waters of baptism, and God will continue to repeat it to us as many times as it takes for us to believe it. So friends, as we venture into a new year, a lot will happen. Decisions will be made, relationships started or ended, careers Change, schools entered, illnesses endured, challenges surmounted. So much will come down the pike in the coming weeks and months. Some of it we may anticipate and be prepared for, but much of it we simply cannot imagine. And it can be daunting until we remember that God is with us through all of it. God is on our side. God will not abandon us. God has already claimed each one of us as God's own to walk alongside us, to strengthen us, to encourage us, and to grant us grace sufficient to become the people that God wants us to be. So as you walk in today, maybe your name tag says your name. Maybe it says father, wife, husband. Maybe it says lonely, abandoned hurting, or maybe it just says, I'm here for the donuts. Whatever your name tag says, hear your identity. These words were said to Jesus, but hear them again for yourself. You are my beloved child. With you, I am well pleased. May you also be shaped and strengthened by these powerful words through this new year. Amen.